Hey everybody, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching today. So I'm going to show you how to make this very cute little Valentine's mailbox. I got asked to do some more mailboxes after I shared the larger Christmas one. So if you haven't seen that one, that I think would look really nice for Valentine's as well, but it is bigger. But these are going to make lovely little table favours. I'm actually putting a lot of my Valentine's makes into a big hamper. So, um, and I, I'll take a photo of that at the end and I'll share it on my blog. Uh, or my Facebook page, or probably both. So if you want to see that, you'll be able to see it later on. Anyway, this very cute little one here, you have this drawer and you just pull that out and you've got a couple of sweet treats in there. So I think it is a lovely table favour. I think it'd be great for Christmas as well, for Santa's letters. You know, the children could make these and again, lovely little table favours. No specialty dies for this one. If you've made the coffin or the, what else did I make? It's the same it's pretty much the same kind of process oh yeah the mailbox from last year it's the same as uh, same way that i've made those so very straightforward so let's get started okay so we'll go through all those pieces in a moment now i've got a template that i'm working with here so when i i've already scored this is the one that i'm going to be using i've already scored it but i'm going to score on the white and i'm going to highlight it in black pen and then when we go to cut I'm going to point to this one when I'm cutting on this one because with the pattern and there's a little bit we've got to do within here and I just want to make sure that you get it all in the right place. So you want a piece of four and a half by 12. Along the four and a half side, you're going to score at half an inch and four inches. Okay, so just like so, and I've already done mine on this one here. Then along the long side, Mine's slightly shorter than the 12 because I didn't want to use my 12 inch white card. This is just some scrap that I had. So pretend mine is the 12 inches. So you're going to score at half an inch and three inches. Okay. Next, you want to score at five and a half just to the first score line and then flip again, five and a half just to the first score line. And then you'll score at nine and a half just to the first score line. And again, flip just to the first score line there. So you should have something that looks like this. Next, we want to create this square here, which is within this large open section. So if you just have it so it's facing you like this and you're going to now pop it in your scoreboard, you're going to be working down here. Now, if I bring mine down to 12, this score line will be lining up at your nine inch marker. You want to come in one and a quarter. Now, the easiest way I've done this is I just use my ruler and from this line here, just keep it along that nine inch score line. And you want to just score three quarters in from this line here so I can feel the track. And then I'm going to score up to seven inches because you want it to be two inches by two, this box or the yeah, this is the opening really for where the, the box is going to come in and out. And then I've just popped my ruler from this side and I've come in from this score line. Again, I can feel where that track is and just score up to seven inches. Okay, so you have something like that. Then pop it along the long side and you're going to join those two markers up and it should be at the five inch score line. So I'm just joining that together. So now you should have something like this. That's what you want to finish with. So you want to fold and burnish now all of those score lines. So we're going to work along these two strips here, first of all. What we're going to do is cut down this score line, this score line, and this one here. These two, you want to keep as they are. Everything in between here, you now want to cut some crocodile teeth. So whenever you're working with a oval shape, circular shape, anything with a curve, you need to cut into the card so it can wrap around that shape. So again, like I said, if you've made my my mailbox from Christmas or the Halloween coffin boxes, this is the technique and this is how I made those. So just between these two score lines. The smaller you do these, the better the curve. So I have about, it's about a quarter of an inch, I think I've said before here, maybe a little bit less. Okay, you can see that there. You want to repeat that now on this side. So again, just cut down this one, this one, and this one. 
and then just cut in between. I'm going to actually do that all on my proper one here as well. So you should have something now that looks like this. Next, you want to remove that square. I'm going to use my cutting knife. If you'd rather use your scissors, use what works best for you and you feel most comfortable with. But you do want to make sure you get this perfectly straight because the box needs to be able to fit and slide in this size. So if you're, you know, slightly crooked, then um, it is going to affect the way that the drawer comes out. You can always go in and cut a little bit more away if you need to, but you want to remove that completely. Next, you want to cut up these two score lines here because these are going to be the tabs. So just free those up. And now you may want to do this before you cut these pieces, but you want to put a bit of a curve into this just to help it again get into that shape so what we want to do next is this is the base this piece here so you're going to bring that up and i like to stick this one over this one here okay so if you want to take a little bit off if you're going to have anything you know hanging over the edge just cut a little wedge off of that one and just bring that one up so you've got a nice right angle I'll just show you on that one. I'm not going to actually start sticking that one because I want to get this one done here so you can see where I'm working off with this one. And I just use my quick grab. I'm just going to pop a little bit of my glue just there and then just bring that around. And you'll be able to cover all of this up with some trim. In fact, I think it should have been that one. Yeah, put that one over and then you don't get that raw edge. Okay, so I will take the wedge off of this one here. Like I said, you're not going to see that anyway, but just in case you did. So actually put the glue on the bottom and bring round the side. Again, just make sure that's a nice right angle. So I ended up bringing up, so take a wedge off of this, the base piece, just there, and then bring that around. And you're going to stick that one like so okay so they wrap around like this you can see already now we're starting to get the bottom of that box or mailbox next we want to pop these pieces in behind here so we're starting to get that base it's like a little tray and make sure it's a nice right angle so you should now have something that looks like this and then we're going to add glue all along this side and then stick this one down. And those side pieces should be able to wrap around. And that's just going to add a bit more strength and support. And then we can put some glue on that one and bring that around. Again, just make sure it's nice and straight, the sides there. So this should be, again, nice right angle. Okay, so now we've got this effect. Then I've cut these pieces here. So this is the same paper. In fact, I don't think I shared the pad that I used. It's this one here. It's an old one, pink paper block. It's just a really nice one. You've got the flamingos there. Works quite well for Valentine's. So I've got myself two pieces here. And these measure two and a half, which is the width of the box. And then I've got seven and a half. You want it to be as long as it's taller than the height of the box here and we're going to stick it right over here focusing on the sides get that nice and straight and then the rest will stick into place then we're just going to cut around that like I've done on those past projects so you want to add your glue all along the sides you can use your red tape double-sided tapes if you want but I find liquid glue best for these kind of projects it just allows you to be able to move things into place and reposition if you're not happy so I'm going to start from the bottom and just sit that down first. So I'm kind of keeping it lifted and then just squeeze in the sides and just feel it with your fingers there. So I can feel that that's sitting where it needs to. If it's overhanging the bottom, that's fine. You can always trim around that bit as well. And then if you turn it this way, I can just move it a little bit that way because I can see that I've cut down further that way. I don't know what's going on there, but <laughs> as long as you've got this shape, it'll be fine. And then I'm just taking the flat end here of my 
bone tool and I can just go in there and just make sure that's all secure. Okay, then I'm going to use my scissors and I'm just going to follow that arch shape and just cut around. Tidy up any little bits. You could always put a pom-pom trim around this if you weren't happy with the, the way it looks. But now we've got one side done there. Now before we do the other side, I think it's best to do your little tray or your box next because I didn't do it on this one here, but when you pull this one out, you can pull the box right out, which is fine. But if you don't want it to come right out and you want it to have a little stopper, then you'll be able to add that whilst this ends open because we need to stick it onto the back of the box. So if you're not bothered about doing that, then just stick the other piece that we've cut here on this side and then we'll go onto the box. But I also think it's just handy to have this open in case you need to maybe trim a bit more away or something's not quite right. So I've got this piece here and this measures eight and a half by four. Along the four inch side, you want to score it two. And along the eight and a half side, you want to score it two, four, six and eight. Okay. Then fold and burnish the score lines. And now we're going to cut up all of these score lines just to the middle there. And then this last piece you want to remove completely. And then we've got this piece, that's our tab, so we can just take a little wedge off of each corner there. Now, if you bring this around, you want your tab at the back, so mine's going to be back left corner there. So this one here is going to be the last one I stick down because it's on the front. So when you open that up, it's the second one in from the left where there's no tab. The tab's on my right hand side here. OK, so these three here now I can just take a little bit more, just a little slither off of the sides. And that's just going to ensure that we don't have anything sticking out because we don't want anything catching when this is sliding in and out of the, the box. If you do want to take more bulk off as well, you can half these. So again, if I bring that round, so these are going to be the side ones. You could cut them, you know, in half again. Like so. I never tend to because, you know, depending on the weight of things and what you're putting inside, I mean, these are just going to have a few sweet treats and probably just be more decorative over the Valentine's period, to be honest. So... What we can do now is add the glue onto the tab and then if you lay it flat so it's going over that halfway score line and then fold that one down it will meet up perfectly and then i always like to just go back over and fold it in another way just give that a good burnish and you'll know then that that box is completely square because it's folding flat and it's all lining up nicely together so that's solid square. It's going to be the last one I stick down. So I'm going to stick, we'll fold this one down first and then I'm going to add my glue to the back of this one and then to the back of this one. You could always line inside this one as well, depending on the, the treat that you're maybe putting inside. And then just make sure, if I just fold that down, use that as your guide to square everything off because that one we haven't cut into. And then I'm just going to put my glue to that one there and just secure that in place. So we've got a nice fold there and then we've got a join on the back left. So now check that this will fit. So it's going to be snug because it's a two inch square going into a two inch square. And I think... Yeah, mine's okay. You want it to, you know, stay, like hold itself in place. Now, if you're happy for it to be like that, then you don't need to add this piece. But I'm just going to pop it in there just so it's there if someone does, you know, not want it to come out. So this piece here is slightly bigger width than the box. So this is two and a half by half. I've stuck two together and I'm just going to add some glue in the middle and I'm going to use my tweezers. And I'm going to go inside 
the box here and I'm going to stick it across so I've got as long as there's something overhanging each end of the box there you see and then that way when you pull it to the end it's not going to be able to come all the way out and just push that down so it's just a little stopper you can you know it's fine without because that one hasn't got it in but uh, just in case you don't want that box to come right the way out that's going to keep it now from coming out any further okay now to stop the box also falling inside so don't push it all the way in i've got these pieces here and i've got a white piece that measures two and a half by two and a quarter and then this piece here is two and a quarter by two so i'm going to stick this one just on the front this is just decorative so this could be your pattern papers you could emboss this and that will give you that border but when you stick this now down i'm going to use my corral glue so this is why it's handy to have the end open here so i'm just holding that put my fingers in there just to hold that box in place i'm going to cover the front here and then you're going to line this up with the bottom of the box and it will overhang equally on the three sides here so that is going to stop it now falling inside so just make sure it's you've got an equal amount overhanging each side there i'm just going to give that and make sure it's completely flush there you don't want it overhanging um, because when we go to stick the base piece on this here it's going to you know get in the way otherwise so just make sure it's flush but now that can fall in there and you see it's not going to disappear and you can see how that looks inside there as well i mean you could make the box as deep as this but i didn't think you needed to but those of you that are happy and confident to you know change those dimensions and stuff you can definitely do that so now i can stick this one down onto this side here so just exactly the same way and just trim around the shape just as i did with the other one okay so now we've got this here so next we can do the base so I guess this is optional, you might not want to add this piece, but you'll need to cut a piece of four and a half by five and a half. And you want to score it one inch on all four sides. So one, rotate, one, rotate, and again on those two. Then you'll see that I've scored these like little, I guess if you look at it this way, it's like a little arch in between each of those sections so we'll start along the five and a half side here this is at one and a half coming up half inch or coming down so just coming down half an inch and that's at one and a half and this one's at four coming down half an inch and then if you pop it this way you can kind of hover your stylus at half an inch there and then just join up the two score lines to give you that effect so that you want to do on both of the five and a half sides then for the four and a half again it's at one and a half down to half an inch but then at three down to half an inch again pop it on this side and just join up those two then you want to cut up all of those score lines there so all the way around just on those little bridge kind of pieces that we just scored find it easier to do these pieces first and then we put the rest together and now if you fold those all in we're just going to stick those on the inside it's just going to act as a reinforcement so I'll just bring that around just use my bone folder there just to get that nice and secure and again over and just repeat that on all of them okay so you should have something that looks like this then we're going to cut up this is along the longer five inch side you're going to cut up the other score lines like so and then flip and then cut up again in fact i should have folded that as well just fold them over I just hold this up 
this is along the five and a half side so now you've got these one inch squares but what will happen is we need to fold that up as well but if you bring that around didn't fold and burnish any of this fold and burnish all your score lines as well before <laughs> i'm just going to do that one there and that one there so if we bring that one around it overlaps and comes into show there so we need to cut these just under half an inch so about three eighths of an inch i'm just eyeballing it as long as it can go behind that piece there okay so yeah it's about three eighths just slightly under that half inch width of the the legs okay and then you're just going to add your glue down there and then bring that around and again make sure you've got a nice right angle just pinch that into place there like so and you want to repeat that on each corner just take a little bit off that corner the bottom there just in case any of it does stick out Okay, so now you should have this stand or it could be a little table, but you want something that should look like that. So now I'm going to add some of my construction glue to the base here. And you want to stick that on top of the base. And you can see straight away you start to get that mailbox look. If you just open up that drawer, you can just add a bit of pressure inside there as well. So whilst that's drying, I've got all these pieces here. So these are from my latest travel stamp set and I've used the love letter. I've just stamped a couple of those. These ones I've coloured. You can see there that they're plain. For the actual mailbox, this can be, all of this decoration can be any size. Now you might have a little mailbox die that could look good on there. But this is three eighths wide by two inches. And then this here is literally like one eighth by uh, one and three quarters. And that just gives you that, like, you know, the inside of the mailbox there. So I'm just gonna run just a thin, piece of glue there and then that will just sit in the middle so you've got kind of the same like border around all four sides like so okay and then some glue there and then just position it wherever really I mean I have it about I guess in total it's from the top of this piece to the top from the top of this it's about an inch like so okay and then these strips here are just the length of a4 or 12 inch whatever and they're by quarter of an inch and i've got one that's going to go around here it doesn't quite join at the back so i just pieced a little bit there but you would never know but that's to wrap all the way around so just run a bead of glue all the way around there and then these ones here are to run along the sides and they just cover the joins and just finish it off quite nicely i think so i'm going to do that i've also got my sentiment here or the, just this one that says love so the idea is, is it says love letters i thought that worked quite nice this one i've heat embossed but that one i've just stamped in the black and then those ones there what i did is snipped off the corner and then had it stuck just below that black piece so it looks like it's just going into the mail box there so i'm gonna speed that up and get it all stuck down i've also got this piece which is the handle this is a quarter of an inch by one and a half along that one and a half i've just scored it a quarter of an inch at each end put a little bit of a shape in the middle and then just folded it so you have that shape there you just want to stick these two flat pieces onto the drawer there so you can open that up.
So there are my finished mailboxes. Really pleased with it. I think it looks so cute and it just opens up there to reveal, you know, the treats, whatever you're popping in there. And again, you can see it does fit two Lindor chocolates. You'd probably get three actually. Let me just check. Yeah, you get three in there. Just, yeah, perfect actually. So there you go. So I hope you've enjoyed this fun, very cute little Valentine's make from me today. As always, I will link as much of the product that I've shared today in the description box below. And I'll be back again very soon with more Valentine's makes. Take care. Bye.